This week, um, I thought I'd start, I'm not sure how many parts this is going to be, um, but I thought I'd do a guide to how I decorate and uh, weather my tanks and also how I dress them with the uh, stowage and things like that. Um, but I wanted to start with like, you know, some uh, real basic ideas first. So it might be worth, uh, given how many that we're going to be looking at and the different techniques I'm going to use, splitting this up into, I don't know, two, three parts, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but first of all, I wanted to start with some basic things that I always do. Um, and that might just give you some ideas for what you can do to, you know, decorate your tanks. Um, the first thing, like most people, I start with um, a little bit of research. So what I, what I tend to do is I go gathering pictures on the net that show the tanks I'm working on and also you know the way that they've been dressed for battle particularly obviously with mine being based these ones being based uh, for the uh, Operation Market Garden I've looked specifically at those tanks now some I mean you can see with that one They've got bits of track everywhere. I mean, you you don't tend to see that on the models. You'll see a bit of track, and the, but you never see them dressed up as much as that. And I think you know sometimes when you've got something like this to work from, you you know you you can be a bit more individual with it. You know, because what you'll tend to see on some models is someone's put a token amount of that on it. But as you'll see in some of these photos, I mean, I'll just skim through. Somewhere they've used netting and things like that over the top of boxes and the sides of the tanks. There's one one here somewhere I wanted to show you. Oh, that one, look. You can see how it's got spare wheels, bits of track ammo boxes and then it's got draped net over it and this one look it's got it all hanging down the side to make it look like it's you know shrubbery and you know trees and bushes and stuff like that i mean some of them are incredible what you know the trouble they've gone to they've built boxes on the side and filled it with sandbags i mean look at that little vehicle just a mass of bags and boxes. I mean, you see these kit bags done up in threes, and same on the universal carrier there. But it's just, I mean, look at that one, it's absolutely covered in sandbags, and then it's got the actual turret with bits of netting and everything on it to disguise that. You know, anything to change the silhouette, I suppose, you know, so it's hidden from enemy observation. And look, there's an example where they've actually built a crate arrangement round the side of it and filled that with sandbags as well. Now, I'm not probably planning on doing anything as elaborate as that, but just looking at the old photos is the best place to start because it gives you an idea of just how much they packed onto vehicles and now how much they adapted them, the soldiers, because they know what they're going through when they're in the tank. They know what it sounds like when it's being hit by shrapnel and bullet fire. They know what to do to try and make it a more, you know, survivable situation. I mean, that one, it's covered in track down the sides and on the turret itself. But anyway, I mean, you get the, you get the idea. Looking at these photos... That gives you the first idea of how you can go about putting stowage on your vehicles. I mean, look at the front of that one. Kit bags and everything on it. There's a good one. Of, uh, well, there's another one. Oh, no, it's the same one. 
obviously you see a lot of this arrangement it's for helping you know getting the tank through obstacles through mud and over barriers and all sorts they're all practical use and this one i mean this is a a, a reenactment but they've took the idea from old tanks and you can see it more clearly than you can on some of the old pictures where they've cut a piece of wood to fit into the shape of the front of the tank and that allows the things to sit on it on the front of the tank. And there's a there's a good one on here as well of a Morris quad that I wanted to show you. Because obviously I've got one of them to do. Well, there's one Morris quad look. Again, covered in net boxes stacked on the top of it. Tends to be a lot of colouring of black around the edges of these, and I've got one of them to build, so I, will, I might even go with that on mine. Because it seems fairly common in some of the old pictures that I've found. So anyway... That gives you a gist of that. I don't want to show you all the old pictures because you'll look for them yourselves. But with that in mind, what I've been doing over time is whenever I've built a kit or a house or a building or a bit of scenery, if I see something that I think, oh, I could use that in another way, um, like... On one of the kits I had, it had a bit of uh, a rolled up netting. So I thought, well, I could use that on a tank as well. So I took a mould of that one, anyway, just for my own use, because obviously, fair play to the people that have done them originally. You don't want to be, you know, being unscrupulous about it. But uh, I've just took a mould of that and poured resin into it. And once that painted up, it'll look quite effective. The other things that I've done is, uh, I'm going to crudely undercoated this one, so I don't know whether you'll see it, but you know the kit bag, kit bags off the back of the uh, soldiers' backs. I think this one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's from the uh, American Airborne. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a kit bag. Um, from uh, American Airborne sprues. So any spares like that that I have left over, I always keep them to use on my tanks. And then, of course, there's there's other people that you can find that do bits of kits as well with stowage on it. So I buy some of them to mix in as well. But where I can make my own, I do. Um, I think I've got one here. It's a typical one where basically what I did, I looked at the side of the tanks, you know, how it carries the poles along. I made one up, a dummy one up in wood with lollipop sticks and then bound it up, put a couple of little kit bags from, you know, some uh, figures that I've built up on it to make it look like the ones that you get on the side of a tank. And then took an impression of that and then poured silicon into the mould. Uh, it sounds like a bit of a faff, I know, but you can quickly produce. I mean, you, you can't see it properly, but if you look at this area, all of these are little bits that I've either made or bought. You know, like... You see it better on this one, look, a flat kit pack like we've seen on some of them pictures. Just needs painting on, this one's been undercoated. And we can use these, you know, to build up the look of some of the tanks and the, and the vehicles that we've got. Now, another thing that I, I tend to do, and I'll be honest here, a bit of a confession, uh, because I've packed away because of the house move, um, the stretch bandage I normally use, I've put away and uh, 
somebody kindly picked me this one up but to be fair it's not really the right stuff it doesn't separate enough so I've had to tug it and pull it and stretch it um, and then what I've done here look long before I'm going to need it is I've left it soaking in some inks and paint to thoroughly take up the colour um, I've only just set this going really and then what I'll do is when it when it's soaked up most most of this moisture and I've turned it a few times I'll hang it out to dry it and then I can use this for the camo netting over the top of the vehicles at the end or bits of it to wrap round turrets um, like we've seen in some of the pictures so it's good in a way if you can to get things like this prepared and and then the beauty is you can just plow on with it and start adding things and you know I'm going to add a stowage to these obviously before they're actually painted primed it doesn't matter when I prime these in army green because most of them are going to be primed in uh, army painter green and then coloured up um, it doesn't matter that all of these objects are going to be painted over because at least they'll be undercoated thoroughly then and then I can paint them up as you would if they were moulded as part of the kit um, and it'll help blend it in a lot more so and then obviously the other thing that I've done is I did have uh, some tank track and I took a mould of that as well that said if you didn't want to go to that kind of faff um, Warlord actually do some metal tracking and stowage I've got one example of it here with some of the things that they do but it's an idea to be honest when you're building your kits to see what's come with them and uh, see if there's anything that you can adapt and, and then copy or look for with your tanks and that in mind. I think I clipped that off an old, because I, I go scouring car, boot, car boots as well. And this one was on the side of a cavalry horse but essentially what it is is a bank blanket roll so i clip that off the model and then i've kept it and i keep all these somewhere now that i've packed it all the way because of the house move there is a box with all these kind of bits you know it's like vehicles if i find old model cars i'll cut the wheels off and keep the uh tires and things like that for um for use in my buildings as uh, debris. Well, I do the same thing. I always scout round for any little bits that I can use for, you know, stowage as well. You know, like spare missiles, spare, you know, uh, ammo and things like that to put on the side of things. So anyway, I just thought I'd start by, you know, giving an outline. Of course, sorry, I'm gabbling a bit, but also pick up useful dried out looking twigs it's best to look for these you know in autumn I mean it's going over a bit now because now we're getting more rain a lot of this will be going mouldy but I pick it up when it's still dried out from summer and uh Basically what I do is I lay it on a little plate and zap it in the microwave to make sure there's nothing alive in it. And uh, then just put them in boxes and let them dry out. Now, yes, I could possibly use, you know, if I've got uh, straight ones, I could probably use them on the side of a tank. But mainly I use these, um, you know, for dressing up something like a six pounder you know and have it on the on the ground so it's just 
just trying to think, uh, you know, in advance before you get to these. And then uh, you've got plenty of bits to work with. So let me just set myself up and I'll bring the first model in and I'll start applying some bits. And I'll try and close in on it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Right, so I'm going to start with these two Sherman 3s. Now, this one is a Warlord kit. As you can see, it's got a lot more detail because it's plastic. Uh, this one is a resin mould. But there's no reason why I can't dress this up to look the part. So, going back to some of the photos and the plank arrangement at the front for holding the stowage on. Um, all I've done is I've fashioned these out of a little bit of a coffee stirrer or a lollipop stick. Whatever you've got to hand really. And I'm going to glue these in place just to start with on both of these. Um, on this I'll be using some super glue because I want these to stick fairly quickly. off quick I'm going to give them a spray, a spray with the uh, super glue activator right now this is the front of the tank so the first thing that I need to think about is they're out to protect from oncoming fire because um, invariably you know there might be head on when they're firing to keep their silhouette small um, so probably the best thing to go with first of all is some pieces of track so with this one Again, I'm going to use super glue on this because it is a resin piece of track that I'm fitting on. It's not been undercoated, this piece that I'm putting on here, but it doesn't matter because the old tank's going to be... This one I'm going to use, a, as I said, the track that you can get from Warlord. I think when you're doing it, really, you just got to kind of think from the perspective of the... Uh... I'm sorry about that. That's... Uh... Bob and Peg. Yeah, you've got to you've got to think about the uh, perspective of the people that were in the tank and what they're trying to do, you know, because 
it's no good just sticking things anywhere. They've got to have a reason. I mean, you know, you wouldn't necessarily stick a load of fuel cans on the front because that wouldn't really be what they were looking to achieve, would it? <laughs> so... And then when it comes to... Uh, wheels, you can put them on, on the front, because they're metal, they're going to take some impact. I mean, at the minute, these two are looking very samey, but that's not my intention. I will try and make them look a bit different. I even uh, like this one look where I've took a casting of a wheel off something um, but then I've broke it taking it out being clumsy now you could just throw that away but why would you you know because at the end of the day yes it's an imperfect wheel but maybe it's had an impact already maybe something hit it uh, and that's broke it so I'm going to still use it. It's like storytelling, isn't it, really, when, you, when you're decorating everything. So, well, that's my excuse. It could be that I've just been tired and I want to use it. <laughs> right, another thing that I've got that I can put on these uh, are some little plastic sandbags. Now, I normally do... Um, make my own because uh, they're easy enough to do but I saw these and they were nice and flat and I thought you know they'd be ideal to put on the tanks and uh, you know easy easy to stick on so uh, let me just show you the sprue that they came on and they come in uh, little sections individual ones some piled up pretty sure I found them on eBay I'm going to glue some of these on here as well. And the fact they've got they've got some where it's a group of sandbags, and then they've got others where they're individual. And that gives you a bit more flexibility. Obviously, you've got to keep in mind you don't want it to obscure anything that moves, so always keep an eye on that when you're doing it. Well, what I'm going to do, um, I'll, I'll carry on dressing these up a little bit, and then I'll bring you back for a detailed look at what I've done, and then I can talk you through it. Right, so I've finished adding stowage to these two... Uh, Sherman Mark 3's um, I'm not saying that I'd do this to every tank um, I think you've seen some of my tanks in the past where I've not added a lot of stowage but it's good to mix it up so with some I'm going to add a lot more and some a bit less uh, it's just to create a bit of variety in my collection really but anyway I'll bring this uh, the Warlord one up and show you what I've added to it so I've gone for a lot of track reinforcement on this one. So I've got four pieces of track and some sandbags. Little wooden crate. And I've added track to the side here on the turret as well. 
And what I've used there is some that I moulded from resin because it's still quite malleable so I can actually bend it to the shape of the turret to help it stay in place. And then round the side I've gone for a long kit bag with some small ammo bags and th things on that side. And uh, some more kit, ba uh, kit bags and uh, a crate and then a couple of uh, jerry cans as well on that one. Obviously, it's not finished. It's not finished there, obviously, um, because after the painting, I can still come back to the camo net and bits like that and add that to it. But you've got to kind of do this in stages, rather than try and do it all at once. I mean, and you know, some people would have you know painted the model itself, and then um, added all this stowage. But I'm going with it like this because at the end of the day um, I've made sure that this is good and fixed on and I can then highlight the different bits in paint afterwards. Sure there's going to be a bit of bare plastic underneath bits of it but you're not going to see it anyway so it's not an issue. And from the point of sticking bits on I prefer to stick to the plastic rather than sticking on painted plastic because then your bond is really with the paint as well so so that's that one and then for the uh, print 3d printed sherman 3 similar kind of arrangement i've gone through that broken wheel that i told you about and some sandbags and crate some kit bags Another kit bag on the side there. And then I've gone for some long kit bags on the back, obviously keeping the grill clear. And then the more typical, you know, log carriage on the side. Again, that's a resin print one that I've done. Uh, resin print, resin mould one that I've done. But I've not gone for any track on the side of this one. I want them to, to, to look a bit different. And like I say, with some, I'll play it down a lot more and not put so much on. But that gives you a feel, you know. All you've got to do really is think. Think like the person that's in it. Where do they need the protection? What is it they're trying to carry? Where's the best place to put it? You know, what things have you got to make sure of? You know, you've got to make sure you can move your turret round. You've got to make sure your grill's still open. You've got to make sure you can get into hatches. So it's just a matter of thinking around that, really. Um, and that's it, really. You know, it, it's it's down to your imagination, then. But I thought I'd start by showing you those two. And... Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'll bring the uh, half track up and I'm going to add some uh, stowage to this one now. And uh, again, I'll bring you back and talk you through what I've done. Right, so I've kept this one reasonably simple. And I've gone for some of this rolled up netting on the sides. One on that side as well. Because obviously, like, if they put up some kind of canopy on that, they can roll the net over the top of it, is, is the thinking. And uh, just a few kit bags on the back. A wheel drum in the back of the cab. And then these blankets on the side. Another little kit bag over this wheel arch. And, you know, that's it don't really want to overdo it with this one i've still got to decide about these guns i mean you can see it's gunned up to heck they're all the guns that come with it i need to decide if i'm taking any of these off before i paint it i probably i'll take this one off i might leave the side and the back back one on i'm not sure but uh just made use of obvious places for stowing things really 
didn't want to put anything on the front to obscure the view or the grill or anything else so I've kept that one as you can see quite simple but it does bring the model to life a lot more it doesn't look quite so sterile it looks like it's a working piece of kit certainly it will by the time we've uh, painted it and weathered it and things like that so that's that one next one that i'm going to look at let's see i'll look at this uh cromwell tank and it, as you can remember this one had kit problems which i've covered up with some green stuff on the front but now i've got the opportunity to, to obscure that even more so why not So let me take a look at that with some of these stowage and I'll bring you back and show you what I've done with this one. I don't again I don't think I'm gonna go as heavy as I did on the uh Sherman threes, but one or two bits here and there might just make the difference. Right, I'll bring you back in a second. Right, so here's the uh Cromwell. As I said, I've gone a little bit easier on this one than uh, the other Shermans and I've just gone for a few sandbags around the front nothing to obscure the machine gun just to offer a little bit of protection a blanket thing there on the side a little, uh, little um, ammo box on the back end Another ammo box on this side. And then a blanket wrap there. So I've kept that one fairly tame. But it's just enough to bring it to life. I mean, it look, granted, they look a bit odd at the minute because obviously they're a mixture of colours. It's, you know, and it, it looks out of kilter. But when it's all painted up, it'll be fine. And you just got to tell yourself that till you get to that stage. As with all these tanks, any of these little aerials are so prone to coming off. What I do tend to do with them, you know, if if these snap off, I tend to put wire ones in and perhaps drill a little hole, but make it really soft wire so it bends rather than snaps. And I think that's just a better idea for them. But at the minute, I've left it with these on. But they're looking very precarious and they ain't even seen the battlefield yet. So... I may well take them off and replace them with wire at a later stage. But that's that one dressed up. Right, the next one is the Firefly. Now this one, when you actually build the kit, it comes with a few bits of uh, stowage and track and everything in place on this one. Um, so again, I'm I'm not really going to overdo this because uh, I think it's got you know quite a few bits on already. It's got this track and the wheel, but I'm just going to add a few bits and I'm going to add the uh, the plank carrier thing there as well, and uh, that'll probably be it for this one. Might add something to the side. I'm going to have another look at one of my photos of a firefly because that's got some baggage on on the side so i might might just have a look at that photo again and it has got a bit of stowage on the back already look it's got a jerry can just there and another wheel i don't want anything that's going to get in the way of it turning but yeah i'll have another i'll have a look at that and then i'll bring you back and talk you through what i've done with it Right, so I've completed the Firefly and uh, what I've gone for is I've gone for this supporting plank again and then a small crate and a slightly larger one and then the bedroll and a kit bag, some smaller kit bags on the sides. And then as I say, with the original bits that came with the kit, like the wheel and the jerry can, I think 
that might be enough for this one. I might, I might just put a roll of net on this side. I'm not sure yet. But uh, I'm kind of basing that on a specific photo. Like this one. Uh, oh, whether you can see that. You can see the plank and the wheel arrangement on the front. And it's got kit bags. Hanging down at the side there, look, on both sides of the turret actually. So I've gone, you know, to model that one more specifically. Um, and I will come back to that when I'm adding the uh, net that I'm dyeing with the paint. But as I say, I've not uh, gone too massive on this one I might just put let's just have a look which ones have I got look at I'd have to cut cut into this one. Let me just cut cut this, and then I'll I'll bring you back. All right. So I've added that net now. I mean, the secret is really is you know when you've got some of these little bits. I mean, I don't know. Let's pick a crate. If that crate stands too proud, don't be afraid to cut a piece off of it at the back because that's not going to be seen anyway, and you can make it fit more where you want it. Or shape it to go around some of the mouldings, which is what I've done on this one, so I could secure it. You know, I mean, that's a lot better grip because it was just too flat. So I've cut some bits out of the back of it to fit it around the moulding, and it's now glued on really well. Another thing that you might want to consider adding to these, um, I may add it on some of the smaller vehicles. Is if you've got any spare heads from your, um, you know, from when you built your figures, or spare helmets, better still, stick them on, you know, because you you do see tanks with spare helmets and things on there as well. So little bits like that, I mean, you can keep, you know, you've always got them over, so you might as well use them. I mean, you can just cut the head part off the helmet if you've not got any blank helmets. Um, and there's no nothing wrong as well with you know you've always got plenty of rifles or machine guns over you know if you place them right they're going to look effective you know they've just been put on there so but I think that's as far as I'm going to go with the Firefly because as I say it does come with you know the wheels and bits of track on and jerry can so I don't want to overdo it too much I don't want them all to look you know the same right and that basically leaves me this last one which I believe is this the Sherman 5 I think it is yeah this is a Sherman 5 isn't it that's right that's the Firefly they're both Sherman 3's this is the 5 the Sherman 5 uh, again this one comes with quite a bit of stowage already on it in the kit it's got some bits of track and a wheel, jerry can, another wheel on the back. So I probably not. I might just add a couple of kit bags and things on this one. I'll just take a look at it and then I'll bring you back. Right, so I've completed the uh, Sherman 5. And um, what I've gone for on here, I'll try and get a bit of light on this. Um, I've added another wheel and some smaller kit bags and then some sandbags on the front and obviously it's got the original things that were fitted on it anyway so that's looking fairly covered and then all I've gone for is some small kit ba bags in addition to the ones that are there and I've gone for the long tarpaulin with kit bags on the back side of it hanging down 
and a couple of crates on the top and that and that's it for the Sherma 5 that'll do now with these you may remember I left them open because I've got to paint all the insides and the seats and everything so if I do add any stowage to this and it's it's not certain that I will um, I'm gonna have to do it the other way around on this one because I need to get the uh, the driver and passenger in place on that and paint the inside and then seal it and mask it off for this for the spray painting so that's going to be one that I'll uh, come back to next in the next part and again the same with the quad the Morris quad I'm gonna have to paint all these seats up and get the drivers in place paint any inside detail and then mask it for the main spray job. Again, I mean, whether I will end up adding any stowage, I'm not sure. It's got the wheel and stuff on there. I might put a few small kit bags on. Similar with the uh, Universal Carrier, as you remember, I've had to leave the front off. I mean, I've got these sat in there, but they're not glued at the moment. And I've got to paint up any of the bits I'm not going to get to before I put the front on and uh, paint up the gun as well and put that in place. So if I'm gonna add anything, I think on this one, I'm probably gonna go with just a couple of little small kit bags, which I'm gonna glue on the side here So I can get that done. And the same the same with this one as well. I'll uh, really only add some very simple bits on the back of it. I don't think it really needs a lot on this one, to be honest. So, again, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably leave them until next, the next... Uh, next part now as well and then obviously the main one that i'm going to be coming back to is the six pounder gun because with that one i really need to get this sprayed up first decide how i'm going to position it on this board and uh, then we can have a look at adding some of the smaller packages and crates around the back end of it before i go on to decorate it so at this stage, I think it's best to wrap it, wrap it up and uh, I'll thank you for joining me. I uh, hope you found some of it interesting. I hope I've not waffled on too much. I know this has been a bit of a long one, but there was, you know, quite a lot that I wanted to fit into it. But uh, well done if you persevered and got through to the end. I do appreciate it. If you found any of it useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up or even subscribing for the next videos as they come. And uh, again, if you want to make any comments or ask any questions, please do. I love to read them and I always do reply. Anyway, thanks again and I'll see you soon. Bye.